and welcome to my channel. I am Stephanie and this is the a weekly wrap up for the third week in January, January the 13th through the 19th. As I said, this is the wrap up for the third week of January and it is the fourth week of the government shutdown. Um, I guess I'm just going to remind you guys of that until it's over because that actually helps you sort of quantify how many books I actually read. I've read eight books this week. I did actually do pretty good. Um, even though on Monday there was a snow day for my kid and then on Friday there was a snow day for my kid and on Tuesday and Wednesday there was a two hour delay for them as well. And yeah, so much fun so much fun. But I got lots of reading done. So that's what you guys are here for. Um, make sure that if there is something specific you want to hear about, you check out in the description box so that you can time jump to specific things that you like, or you can just watch the entire video. I greatly appreciate it when you guys do watch the entire video. And make sure you comment down below, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. Now that I've got all that out the way. Let's get to the books that I read last week. So, um, Last week, I read The Catch by Kay Bromberg, and I place this in sports contemporary romance. I give this book five stars. I give it four Steam fans, and I listen to it on audiobook. This book is the conclusion for Scout and Easton story, which I told you guys about the week before. This is about Easton, who is a baseball player who had an injury and Scout was on his rehab team. She was the lead rehab specialist helping him and they ended up getting into sort of a relationship. And this book was a phenomenal because even though it's about their romance, it also had so many extra emotional things that went along with it. Scout has her own issues that she was going through. Easton was going through his own issues and it just became such an emotional ride and it was so sweet and so beautiful and the sexy time was off the chain still even though there was some conflict and everything like that. The story does pick up where the last story left off and it was just phenomenal. I loved every single moment of it. The next book that I read was A Walking in Circles Before Lying Down by Meryl Marco. And I placed this in... What am I placing this in? I think women's fiction, maybe, or just fiction overall. I'm not exactly sure. But I read it for Buzzwordathon, which the buzzword is lie, so lying down. Um, I DNF this book at 15%. Uh, it gets no fans because there was no sexy time in it. And I listened to it on audiobook. This book was painful, so very painful. Uh, this book follows Dawn and her dogs, and I couldn't even grasp what this story was supposed to be about. I was like, oh, why did I pick this? Oh, wait, I remember why I picked it, because it had the buzzword in it. Why? Why, why, why? It was so boring. It was annoying. Dawn as the main character was annoying, because she just kept talking about how she had failed marriages, I think it was, and that all of a sudden her dogs, yes, that's what it was. She had some failed marriages, and then she ends up getting a dog. She always picked the wrong person, and I was like, Wah. her dogs were her saviors, and I just, like, I can't, I don't have time for that, so I'm Dean it. That's what I did. The next book that I read was Filthy Beautiful Lies, which is book number one in that series of standalone books, uh, and this is actually a first in the duet. So, by Kendall Ryan, I place this in Erotic Contemporary. Now, you might ask, why do I get both erotic and contemporary? because I'm going to explain it to you. I give this book 4.5 stars. I give it five, five Steam fans. Oh, so hot. So very hot. I listened to it on audiobook and I listened to it for Buzzwordathon because it has the buzzword in it, lie, and the series is called Beautiful Lies, I think, or something like that. And this book follows Sophie and Colton. They're in California. It does fall off on a cliffhanger, but it's so good. So... What is the premise behind this? Oh, so Sophie 
is trying to help her sister who has the big C and she has to do some things that uh, are questionable and Colton is the one that ends up helping her. I don't want to give too much away about this series or about this duet because it really caught me off guard. I was on my way to pick up some equipment for my son who moved into another group and needed some new equipment for his swim team. And yeah, I started listening to this and was like, oh, this is very, very different. So I don't really want to give you what it was because I like that I was caught off guard with it. Just know that it is hot. It is so steamy. It is like borderline a little bit taboo. It's going to test your limits. So if you're not into dark and dirty, grimy things like I am, it may not you know, be for you, but it is phenomenal if, as you get through the story and there's this emotional aspect to it that I totally didn't see coming. And this is why I place it in erotica and in contemporary. The next book that I read was Filthy Beautiful Love, which is book number two. This is the conclusion to Sophie and Colton's story. It also is set in California um, by Kendall Ryan. I place this in erotic contemporary as well. I give this one five full stars and I still give it five steam fans. Um, and I also am placing it or reading it for my romance genre-thon for Second Chance because things that happened in book number one, that cliffhanger that I told you about, it is resolved and you get to see sort of the revelations that are made in the second book and it is definitely a second chance sort of story. I wouldn't say love story but um, definitely a second chance sort of story. So go into this one after you've checked out that first one and I think you're going to enjoy the whole entire arc of Sophie and Colton and all the things that they have to go through. It was, I loved this duet and I can't wait to get to the other two books in this series which are standalones about Colton's brother. Brothers. Two brothers. The next book that I read was The Water Cure by Sophie McIntosh, and I placed this in Women's Lit. I DNF this book at 50%. I give it zero fans, zero steam fans, because there was no steam to it. Oh, I got this as an arc from NetGalley, and I am confused about this book. I'm confused, so confused about it. I have no, I'm at a loss. So you have these three sisters that are on this isolated island and they have a mother who I don't even think they give the name um, and then they have a father who's off doing something or another but they call him king and the girls supposedly have like this special bond and they've never seen men before but one of them is pregnant Ooh, yeah, there's so many, so many issues with this book that I was just like, nope, I can't do it anymore. It was very boring. It was very jumbled and I just didn't get it. Didn't get it. Not my cup of tea. The next book that I read was Made It to the Reaper by Alexa Riley. I placed this in erotic PNR, paranormal romance, short stories. I give this book five stars. I give it five steam fans and I listened to it on the podcast of read me romance read read me romance yes 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 this is the first book in season two and this is a book that is actually a spinoff from their virgin blood bundle series of books and you meet Grimm I guess in the end of that book or that series so I'm really excited to get to that bundle and you know get some backstory on how Grimm came to be with this covenant but you have in this book this one right here mated um you have Aurelia 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 and she is the daughter of two vampires or one vampire a vampire and something or another and they Ooh, she feels different in her covenant and she just she's there with them but she feels their emotions and everything like that and she just knows that she's different until 
she turns 18 and then she feels like she's dying. Well, Grimm is a Grim Reaper, death, the person that collects the souls, and he has a pool as well. He ends up going back to the Covenant and finds Aurelia and the two of them are needed because yes <laughs> yes yes I love reading new and out of the way things by Alexa Riley this is why I love them because that's what they give to me I love it I love it I love it I love it love it and this week's podcast was pretty amazing as well their chit chat in episode one and episode five was great I loved all of the chit chat and the banter that Alexa Riley, Leah Mel, and Tessa, Tessa Bailey have. It's great. I love the information that we get from them. And, you know, I think you guys should go check out that podcast. All the information's in the description box. The next book that I read was My One and Only by Kristen Higgins. I placed this in Women's Lit. I give this book 4.5 stars. I give it two Steam fans. I read it for a project that I am doing as an audiobook. And this is a second chance story, not a love story, um, because oh, it was so special, so very special. I went into this because it's a second chance story, and I was so surprised. So in this story, we have Harper, who is this badass divorce lawyer. She is so cynical when it comes to love and everything like that because she was married and then she got divorced and through this story you find out why she was divorced from her smoking hot sweet caring husband ex-husband now uh, Nick and they end up having to go to Harper's stepsister's wedding because the stepsister is marrying Nick's brother. They're going to be family again, right? And then some unfortunate things happen, and Nick and Harper end up taking a road trip. So I have just clicked off like three different things, which is amazing. I read a book for my project. I read a book for Romance genre -thon of Second Chance, or another book for Second Chance. And I completed my Romanceopoly bus space which I pulled last week, uh, and that was to read a book about a journey, and they definitely take a journey. And then overall, Harper has a journey as well, and it's just, it's so beautiful. This road trip was amazing. It was so sweet, and it was caring. There were some flashbacks here and there of how they got into the situation that they were in, and I just loved every minute of it. It was like revolutionary or you know um it, it was it just showed a woman can have everything she wants but at the same time lose things that she needs and it was just so beautiful so very beautiful then the final book that i read last week was unscripted which is book number one in the scripted duet by christy pastori Oh my gosh, I place this in contemporary. I give it 4.5 stars. I give it four Steam fans. And I got to read this as an arc. It has been, it's being re-released and revised. So I got that version of it. And I also can place it and read it for Romanceopoly for my library space, which is a free space of reading any book that you want. So in this story, we have Holiday, who is this super independent woman that works in the fashion business, but she has some dark secrets. One afternoon, she is in the hotel lobby of this amazing hotel, and meets these two little girls that are just so cute and adorable and just, oh, so yummy. And guess who their father is? Their father is Ronan, who is this big mega movie star. <sighs> so hot. And they end up having this instant connection. And I have read about Ronan and Holiday before in other books that I've read from Christy. So I sort of knew that they are going to get together. I do know that. I'm happy about that. But to see their history and find out how they became Ronan and Holiday is like amazing. It is so sweet. And the things that poor Holiday had to go through to get to where she is right now and her in to get gain her independence is just like heartbreaking. But at the same time, 
watching Ronan try and convince her that she's worthy is just, oh, oh, so sweet, so beautiful. And this one does leave you on a bit of a cliffhanger, but don't worry because both books will be released at the same time at the end of January. So it's been revised and updated and, oh, but I already have it. So you guys will hear about that in just a second anyways. Alrighty, on to what I am currently reading. And I am currently reading All My Truths and One Lie by Fabiola Francisco. This book, I can already tell I'm about 10 to 15% into it already. It is very poetic and flowery. I think that's how we say that word. But it's very poetic. I'll leave it at that. Very poetic in that it's taking me a little time to ingest and sort of get to the story and I'm loving every minute of it. I have a feeling that I may be wrecked by the end of the story because the last book that I read from Fabiola that was poetic like this, it destroyed me and I couldn't read any of her books for a year. So hopefully that doesn't happen this time. Fingers crossed on that. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, I have very, very high hopes for this very high hopes. I'm still trying to figure out where everything is going with it. The next book that I will be reading next week as well is Perfectly Scripted, which is book number two in the scripted duet by Christy Pastore. Haven't started it, but this is the conclusion for Holland and Ronan's story, and I can't wait to find out what happens, because that cliffhanger was like, what? 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 What is going on? The next book I'll be reading is Flare Up, which is Boston Fire number six by Shannon Stacy. I am reading this book for a special project that I will be doing for the end of the month. And just know that this is a second, the only thing that I really know about it is that it's a second chance story that is going to be released at the end of this month as well. I got it as an arc, so <sighs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Now that I see that it's a number six, I'm hoping that I don't have to read the other books before but I will try and put that out of my mind. Hopefully they're all standalones and I can just read this one and be happy and enjoy it. But you got that's something you guys have to look forward to to list, hearing about later on. I am also going to be reading Filthy Beautiful Forever, which is book number four by Kendall Ryan in the uh, Beautiful Lies series. I think that's what it is. Can't remember. But I've talked about the other two in the series this as I read this week and I can't wait to read this one this is about one of Colton's brothers and I believe this one is about Collins that brother which Collins is Colton's older brother so I'm looking forward to seeing who he ends up with and how they work out and hopefully I'll have a little bit of a Sophie and Colton appearance in this book not too much but I hope there's an appearance for them and I will also be reading Anti Stepbrother by Tijin. And this is to hopefully fulfill one of my romance genre thon categories of unrequited love. So go into all my books blind and, you know, don't really know exactly what they're about. Since I have completed two out of my Romanceopoly spaces already, I'm going to go ahead and pick three more spaces so you guys can see what else I will be reading. Um, the one that I have left is Military Muse, not Military News, Military Muse. I got that wrong last week. Um, and hopefully I will, you know, do something fun. As you can see, I've started to put little spaces on there so I don't repeat anything. Um, not right now, at least until I get the complete board done. But let's see what I will be reading. Alrighty, it's a seven. Six, seven. Oh boy, we have Alien Avenue. Haha, <laughs> I got another library. Library is my friend. Three. Two. Three. All 
Alrighty, I guess I gotta go and check out what the beanies is uh, category, which is a challenge that runs from January the 1st until March the 31st. So those are the books that I read last week. What did you think about them? Let me know if you've read any of them down in the comments. Let's discuss them. Those are also the things that I am currently reading this week. Does any of them look interesting to you? Let me know about those down in the comment as well. Uh, let's discuss which ones I should push up quicker or I should pay more attention to. And those are my new picks for Romanceopoly. And... I will let you guys, like I did last week, know what I will be reading for those three categories over on Instagram, so make sure you check out that. All that information is down in the description box. All my extra stuff, Twitter, Instagram, follow me in all the different places. Make sure you comment about things that are going on in the videos. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, there is a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel. Thank you for watching and we will see you guys later.